everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the John and Wendy Show here on this lovely Friday morning, at least on the West Coast. I am one half. <laughs> Of the uh, title there, I am the outlaw John Roca, joined as always by the great Wendy Lee. How are you, Wendy Lee Zaney? Hello. You know, I'm feeling so much better today. I got my booster yeah. for COVID yeah. because I heard, you know how, well, you and I both had it, so you yes. get it. Yeah. They said that uh, you have to wait 90 days. 90 days, yeah. Like have to. So I dug into it a little bit more and people were like, honestly, if you want to get it two weeks after you're done, you can get it. Oh, wow. Okay. So the reason why, I mean, I could have waited until the end of November, which would have right. been the 90 days, but right. you know, I'm traveling to Atlanta um, for Blackpink and I just didn't oh, want to be on a plane without, if I could use this extra protection, right. So be it. So I got it. Uh, the Pfizer, it, you know, the usual sore arm. I think it's the sorest it's been Yeah. since the very first shot. Oh, wow. Uh, because when I got, so I got the J and J twice yeah, and then yeah, yeah. I got the Pfizer as like the other booster. Cause my doctor's like, Oh, you have the J and J you better get the Pfizer or the Moderna. <laughs> and I picked Pfizer. Uh, and then, you know, this brand new one, which right. is to, supposed to help fend off the Omicron, yeah. um, Very variation enough. a little bit more. Exactly. So I was like, I'm just going to go get it. Cause it's, I got it on Tuesday, which is exactly two weeks <laughs> From oh, what I'm supposed from... to fly. Right, right, right. So I got it just in time. I think, <laughs> fingers crossed. But dude, the uh, the yeah. side effects was more severe than I expected. Okay. Because the last Pfizer shot I got, I felt nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A I'm sore looking... arm. Yeah. I was fine. Um, and it wasn't like I was like, oh, I got to stay home. Like I went to Disneyland. I didn't care. Right. But right. I had body aches, joint aches, back aches. And then yesterday I was just tired. Yeah. Like I slept. <laughs> Wow. So how many days did it take you? Like three days to just now kind of feel two days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when uh, Lily got hers, Lady Outlaw got hers a couple of weeks ago. Oh, good. Three days. It, it took her out for like three days. Though. Which one did she get? She got the uh, Moderna one, the booster. Yeah. Yeah. And then she went down for like uh, a day. I mean, she worked, but she was struggling, like tired, napping in between her zoom calls and then she was uh, her arm was sore for like three days that she couldn't sleep on that side of the her body oh, too. <laughs> yeah she was like it was so much pain she said so i was like yeah, yeah but you know she's you know she survived without getting it so far so i God can't believe it I can't. <laughs> no, it's I so good because you know you and i were talking and she felt yeah. she was feeling a little sick Right, right. Uh, but, but she it turned out that. to be nothing. Yeah, it always turns out to be nothing. That's why when she wakes up, what's and she, she gets eating? This. What's her? What's <laughs> she's her on thing? keto. She's on keto now for the last. Is that the? I don't know. She's been working out more. She's lost ten pounds. God How love hard is keto to do? Uh, I for me, it's hell on earth. But for her, you know, she orders specific food so she can maintain it. But she's vigilant. Like I try. To tempt her with fries or with some chocolate. It's low carb, right? Yeah, yeah, it's low carb, real low carb. God, I like um, bread too much. I can't. That's the thing. Yeah, but there's certain, but there's special bread they make. But they don't taste know. good. <laughs> yeah, well, fair point. <laughs> she's tried to make me eat some of the stuff that she's made in the kitchen. That's a uh, keto, like uh -huh. some of the lemon cakes and some of the brownies and stuff. Oh, okay. Wolf daddy, those are not good. Those are not good. Well, so, so it's not for me. I, I don't think I can do it. No offense to anybody. You're just gonna you know, have to work out. The, yeah, that's those basically who like bread. Just a yeah. little at a time and just. work. I've cut out lunch. So what I do is I just have breakfast and I have a snack uh, at lunch and then I have a dinner. That's what I'm trying to do now. And that, that's been fine. But yeah, I'm trying to do the opposite. It's kind of be rough. Huh? What's that? I'm trying to, I'm trying to oh, do trying the to do other. Well, I'm trying to eat little, little dinner. Oh, yeah. Very okay. Little dinner. Because I yeah. feel like for me specific, this is not obviously to everybody. Right. Um, like if I eat too much at night, I'm very uncomfortable and I can't sleep well. Oh, so I have right. to eat. I have to just snack a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. smart too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I stay up till midnight and then I go to bed. So that's Jeez. usually I try to burn it off as much as I can. And then what time do you get up? Mm, six, six or seven. Yeah, I don't. I only need like five or six hours. How? I'm just, I, I think I used up all of that in college. You, pull, <laughs> you know, two hour, three hour sleep, bounce back, party, study, go to class, whatever. Yeah, I don't. I don't even nap during the day, so it's just like it's weird. Um, but I do start to fall asleep sometimes around ten. And then all of a sudden, I'll wake up in like 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and I can stay win. up till midnight. Yeah, <laughs> second, second win. Yeah, second's terrible. So, you know. 
Oh, and uh, uh, but we should say hi to everybody who's joining us. Thank you, uh, Black Loki 3004, Travis Earl, MK Songbird, Kwai underscore gone underscore quigs, uh, and Mr. Yasman 300. We appreciate you all hanging out with us. Sorry we didn't do a show last week. Uh, I was extremely exhausted. Wendy was uh, feeling a little under the weather, so we just kind of uh, put a kibosh on it last week. We're back here to have some fun. It's a nice Friday chill show. We're going to talk about some stuff, get into some things, have some back and forths. We'd love it if you send some uh, some bits and some cheers. If you want to send some Streamlabs, I'll periodically put the address into the chat, but it's right there up on the screen to send some support for us as we go into the weekend. We would appreciate it, but there's so much to discuss here, Wendy. Um, where do you? Well, what? Let's check out your hair first, though. What's the deal? Uh, let's talk about your hair. You've changed your hair. Yeah. Well, what can you say about that? Why? Uh, what, what's the deal here? Or whatever you feel comfortable saying about it. I of guess. course, I had a bad breakup. No. <laughs> no, no, Dustin. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're still married. We're gonna be married forever. forever. It's fine. No, I've always. Uh, well, one, I knew I needed a haircut. It's really short now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much shorter than before. It was long okay. before. And it got to the point where I was like, long it's getting in my way. Like, you know yeah. how you, where I was like, oh, I'm it's getting an echo. Way. Like, you know oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me mute. Way. Let me mute it. I always oh. like to make sure we're on Twitch. But go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Nice. Okay. Um, and uh, sometimes if you put on, uh, I mean, you wouldn't know this if you, unless you're long hair, but if you put on a backpack. No. Yes. Or something. And it just like pulls and you have to like adjust the strap and pull the hair away yeah. and then so i was like you know i'm tired of it i don't, I don't want to do a deal with it anymore and the other thing is i don't i mean every, you guys have seen my forehead i don't like my forehead i've oh, been wow. made fun of in the past okay. and dustin's like i don't understand what you're talking about a, a bunch of my friends are like you don't like your forehead and i was like no i hate it right. i've never liked it because i got made fun of if i hadn't then obviously it wouldn't have yeah. been an issue so i was like let's let me try to hide it for a little bit. So I originally wanted curtain bangs, but he's like, why don't we try like just kind of wispy in the front? He's like, don't put too much in the front. Yeah. Move it more to the side. And he's like, well, let it grow out and see how you like it. And I said, okay, let's just, tr it's just hair. It'll grow back. So. Right. Let's try it. So that's hence the new hair. And then uh, a right. lot of comments are saying that I'm embracing La Lisa from Blackpink because she's notorious <laughs> for her bangs. That. These bangs can't compete with La Lisa, but uh <laughs> I'll be looking like this at Blackpink. So there you go. Maybe. I respect. It. It's a good cut. I like the cut. It's certainly a <laughs> new look. A new look. So yeah, Thank shout you. out to you for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Yasban sent us a message here saying it's okay. Take your time. This week was also hard uh, for me. Lost a family member, but everything oh, is okay. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Yasman. Uh, Sorry to hear that, yeah. man. Our sympathies go out to yes. you. It's never easy, and never an easy thing, and certainly always a tough week when you lose a family member for sure. And Hopefully you're, you know, navigating through the process and you and your family are navigating through the process as best as you can. But we yes. send you our thoughts of comfort and love for sure. Yes. Um, we'll try to make it a, a very lighthearted, fun show for you yeah. guys to yeah. take your mind off things. Exactly. We'll get into some politics. We'll get into some <laughs> big debates. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, cheer 100 from Travis Earl. Thank you, Travis. Very kind of you to send 100 bits. Appreciate that Thank madly, you. brother. Thank you. Um, so yeah, well, we'll get going. We'll get going. As I said, the uh, Streamlabs address is up. The uh, bits and cheers are available. Send them in. And uh, Wendy, let's uh, kick it off. Where use our we? use our emotes if you guys are on Twitch. Yeah. Use the emotes. They're cute. Use the emotes. They're cute. <laughs> Twitch got made them for us. Come on, <laughs> uh, Roka. I will go ahead and jump into the very first topic, and that okay. has to do with a a little movie that's coming out this weekend we'll for the DCEU. That. Uh, you talked about it on Instagram. I've I talked did. about it on my channel. Yeah. Uh, I was actually, I, I can't believe you actually like put it on Instagram because I don't have the capacity to be like typing like this. Oh, no, I just copy and paste. Are you kidding? No way. Oh. I, I always go Twitter first and then I just copy and paste. No way can I sit there and write that much on an Instagram. No, like, no, no. Wow, that's commitment. But no, no I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed reading your, your opinion mm, uh, on the film. I was curious about it because I know you're a huge fan of The Rock. I am. I am. Um, and, but I don't know if you were looking forward to Black Adam or not. Oh, I, I was, remember. yeah, okay. absolutely. Because I, because A, because I like the character. I'm a big mm -hmm. Shazam fan. So Black Adam kind of by connection, I know a lot about. So I had mm -hmm. my own ideas and investment in that character. Yeah. Uh, and then having The Rock and him talking about how long he spent uh, uh, gestating this film, how long he's wanted to play this character, how much he's wanted to play this character. Uh, and, um, that kind of co in combo made me excited. Plus, seeing at CinemaCon, I yeah. think we kind of talked about it at CinemaCon. If I remember, it's been a while now since that happened, and 
I think they talked about it as well. And so I was like, okay. And I know some of the, a couple of the geek buddies weren't, didn't think the trailers were that great, but I was holding out hope. Uh, <laughs> that I was going to uh, enjoy the movie and that maybe the trailers just weren't that great in terms of promotion, but mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and I went to see the movie. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> and uh, I- let's talk about the Rotten Tomato score. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about this. What, there's a lot of controversy around this. What, again, what's going started, on? It started at 50 something. Yes. In the first day that embargo lifted right. and it's then it's kind of up and down and up and down. And today, as of 11, 14 a.m. PST. Yes. Or PT, it's for the critics tomato meter. It's sitting at 43. And for the audience score, it's sitting at 88 percent. Yeah, 88 uh, percent. I gave this movie a fresh. I don't feel it like is. it's rotten. Okay. Yes. Um, I will acknowledge there are issues. Yes. Mainly in the storytelling, the dialogue yeah. part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. A lot of the actors did what they could with it, mm-hmm. um, uh, and I think the action is really, really fantastic. To me, okay. it's, yes. it's it's some of the the better action that we've seen in the DCEU. Yeah, uh, you know, it's I, I I don't know if it's as good as like Wonder Woman, the first one, the No Man Land scene. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty pretty freaking epic. But there is a lot of stuff in Black Adam, mm-hmm. specifically when he meets up with the Justice Society. Yeah. Wow, those action scenes I fully enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, but I think mostly for me, the flaw of it sits in how they deliver the story and they yeah. kind of muddied the I, I, I get I get what they were trying. I think I get what they're trying to do. Yeah. Where so we as the audience all understand that Black Adam is more than just an anti-hero. I put him more villain than anything. Yeah, else. he's very much a villain. Yes. But they kind of sit on the fence of this anti-hero thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a little bit more. And I think they, I feel like they, in whatever roadmap they have for the DCEU moving forward, whatever mm-hmm. Zaslav is, is, is dreaming up in his head, yeah. is mm-hmm. that The Rock is committed to this role. He enjoys it. And you can tell mm-hmm. he fully oh, yeah. liked it. Absolutely. Yeah. Just being bad. Like usually he's kind of, you know, good guy or reluctant hero yeah reluctant this is not a reluctant hero like he kills he doesn't care he doesn't care what you say and he proved that throughout the whole movie yeah like you think he's like oh yeah he's gonna do it this way nope he's just okay bye bad guys you're not gonna be in the next movie um i think they're setting it up so that when he turns full heel the audience yeah. can feel the effect of it more so i get it mm-hmm. but at the same time i think we were all looking for like straight up badass yeah. And we got that, but like just really, really, I don't feel like we needed to baby this character. Yeah. I, and I think that's where my, and as I said, said in my review, it's a mixed bag. You know, I think, mm-hmm. the Rock, I think the rock does what the rock does mm-hmm. and he does it well. And I, I liked him. Uh, and maybe I should have made a, a point to add that sentence in there that I enjoyed what he does, but I did say he does what he does and he yeah, does it well. no, that's... Me, that covers it, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I've I've always enjoyed him. Uh, aside from Scorpion King, I've always enjoyed him in movies, uh, and of course, that I was, love him that what movie. early nineties was it? Yeah, early, yeah, yeah, late when well, that late nineties, I think, right? Because it's because he's still in the WWE at that time. Um, but yeah, so you know, so I was I was like, okay, let's see what we got here. But yeah, the story to me, I, I you know, it's a disturbing trend in these comic book movies and TV shows. I'm not letting Marvel off the hook either. Mm. to present a legitimately heavy issue and then just address it in the most surface way possible. And I think it's such a disservice to an issue like that, especially in 2022, when people are much more politically aware, whether they they like it or not, to these issues. And there's much more information about these issues. So presenting them in a way that is just so surface level, I think, frustrates me. And I found that I felt that way about racism and systemic racism that they addressed in Falcon and Winter Soldier. I felt that way a little bit in Loki and this idea of mental health and how they kind mm-hmm. of address some of the stuff there. And then I felt that way here with the essentially what there's I'm not gonna ruin anything, but the, the corporate colonization of a of a country. And I think like, okay, let's dive deeper into that. And and we don't. The villain be, is essentially faceless. Uh, uh, it does eventually show itself, but then you're like, eh, really? And so it just didn't have enough power and I think with the Justice Society, I loved uh, Quintessence Swindell. I, I loved oh. the, the guy playing Cyclone. Um, I really enjoyed those two, actually. They had really nice chemistry. Yes. Uh, and I thought Pierce did a nice job with Dr. Fate for what he 
what they let him do in the movie. I thought he did a nice job. I'd love to see a whole series of him. As I know. Great, I want right? more. Yeah. Under someone else's guidance and someone else's direction, I think I'd like to see that going down. I don't know what Aldous Hodge was doing. It didn't work for me. I know it worked for some people. It didn't mm -hmm. work for me. Um, and the kid just got so the cute kid cliche got so annoying uh, for me. And so did it not feel like Terminator to you? Terminator two? Uh, John, yeah, John but Connor, I don't like John that. Connor, T, T, no, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. that's well, that's why I'm saying I don't feel like we needed that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. We did not need it. And I think Wendy, you're 100 percent right. I think they should have dialed into the fact that he's a villain. Let it, we uh, Joker made a billion dollars, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. So seeing a villain come to become a villain is not something that I think studios and these comic book properties should shy away from. They should invest in this stuff and see where it goes. People like to cheer on a good villain. And it surprises me because The Rock, who has been a heel in the WWE and became successful because he was a heel, <laughs> I think you would think he'd be the person that would understand that. But I, there, th that's what the problem with the movie was. They couldn't make a decision about what they wanted him to be. At one moment, he's a heel fighting the Justice Society. At another moment, he's saving the kid and the mom. Like, we need him to be a heel so he goes on a journey to maybe by the end understanding that some of his actions maybe he needs to take a look at then you could at least still have at the end some sort of positive ending to yeah. it overall so i, I just in, in the end it just didn't work for me the way i wanted it to work for me but wendy's absolutely right the special effects are fucking gorgeous yeah gorgeous that it's jet good. Gorgeous, and the fight <laughs> sequences are absolutely a lot of fun. Hawkman, so, whenever he oh my, the wings were oh, that was Hodge. Yeah, and like I said, whenever they're the, if you just want to go, I said in my in my tweet, if you just want to go, turn your brain off and have fun with some action, not care about the story, knock yourself out. This movie's going to satisfy you. If yes. you want to actually address the stuff that's going on and see it addressed in the movie in a way that makes sense, then you're going to be unsatisfied. I think by the end, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like they could have leaned in a little bit more to to the the conduct stuff mm -hmm. a little bit more because they they tried. I feel like they they started off like this was the intention, but yeah. they didn't completely follow through it. So that's where it felt. I think for the storytelling of it, yeah, where I was like, ah, I wanted so much more from that because I feel like I they had a vision of where they were going, and then maybe too many hands into the pot. Yeah. I don't know. We're not yeah. there, but who knows? <clears throat> that's what it feels like. But action's but, fantastic. Yeah, the action. It's so. a comic book movie, first and foremost. Yeah. So, like, I really, really enjoyed the like all of it. Was so I was sitting there, I was like, "Whoa, this is great!" The, the I like the soundtrack. Some people were saying I, I read the reviews. Oh, yeah. No hate to them. Um, don't you don't have to look it up, but like, I just you know. Yeah. I was. I enjoyed the 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 loud. Womp womp, whatever. Oh, the uh, <laughs> music, yeah, yeah, the yeah, epic, yeah. Boom, drops. almost, yeah. yeah. I I enjoyed it, but some people didn't like it. I was like, I don't know, turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Yasman is right here. It says, how was Egypt portrayed in the film? I know the director of Moon Knight attacked the film during Moon Knight release for how badly DC is handling and portraying Egypt in the Wonder Woman 1984 uh, Black Adam. Yeah, yeah. I, I, as I said, I think they default to cheesy approach to that situation. I don't think they present it in a way that's satisfying to me. But other people certainly don't care. And some people said, well, doesn't it like not getting too deep? Doesn't it help other people consume that issue a little bit better? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I guess so. So I can only speak from my point of view, which is I like to have layered, nuanced, yes, complex approaches to things because I like to be challenged mentally. Uh, and I know you're like in a superhero movie, but you know if you're going to present this stuff, you've got yeah. to, to me, you've got to do the due diligence on it. And I don't think they present. And it's funny you bring that up, Yasmin, because I immediately, I almost put that in my review, mm -hmm. uh, my tweet or my Instagram post, where I almost said this felt like they approached this story like Wonder Woman approached uh, 1984 approached the Middle East crisis in the 1980s by just you know giving it the surface window level treatment, which is not what you want here. So window dressing. Yeah. But yeah, so um, yeah, I owe Snyder a steak for sure. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. What was I, the bet? I bet him a couple of weeks ago when the first reviews came out, when people like our brother Scott Menzel, when uh, De uh, was it Eric Davis, I think mm -hmm. came out, Brandon Davis rather. Oh no, wait, who's the one at uh, probably the, both Fandango? It came out. With Eric Davis. Like, oh yeah, Eric Davis. It came out. Yeah. They were like so positive about the movie. I'm like, oh, 
well, if these people are so positive about the movie, mm-hmm. then it seems like they got it right. So I'm because mm-hmm. I trust their opinions. And so I tell Jeff, I think the movie's going to open to $100 million domestically. I think it'll do it. What is it at? It's, um, <laughs> let me see. Hold on. I go, I'll go it's to projecting uh... at 50. I think it's projecting at 50, but for the weekend, yeah, for the weekend, globally, more than that. But well, of course, domestically, the rock is, yeah, the rock sells, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so for me, I was like, oh, you know, 100 million. And Jeff was like, you're insane. I bet you a steak. And then when I saw the movie, I texted him, I said, uh, pick your steak you want. I will be <laughs> steak. so we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, 7.6 mil. In Thursday night previews, yes. this is via deadline. Yeah, and then they're thinking, "What's where's the projection?" Yeah, I don't know. Sixty mil plus for its first frame. Yeah, for sixty mil plus, probably right. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, even I, if, even if, like you know, I, I just I hate seeing movies fail, regardless yeah. of my feelings on it. I, I just hate it because I know people worked on it. Yeah, of course. Hard, you know, like you and I are actors, but we also yep. know how production works behind the scenes. So it's, and I'm like, oh man, like regardless of, of my feelings on, on movies, I usually want it to do well. But yeah, yeah. 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 I'm weird. <laughs> it's weird about the deadline. Anthony D'Alessandro writing this saying, fans always come out on Thursday night. Let's hope it keeps up. Why are you cheering on a film as an impartial article writer for this? I just thought that was weird. Like, why would you say that? Um, like, are you? Why are you championing? If you, you, you're writing about the box office, shouldn't be encouraging your write, readers to go see the movie. It seems odd, unless you're the reviewer. In a review, mm-hmm. knock yourself out. But in an article, it just seems like a reporting one. Yeah, it just seems yeah. odd to you know, do that. <clears throat> um, critics, uh, yeah, forty three percent, as you said, it's eighty eight percent. Um, it is uh, other compa- Black Adam is besting so far. Uh, Fast Furious and ni- uh, nine, which opened at seven point one million. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier uh, last year, I guess, right? Ant Man at six point four, Shazam at five point nine, No Time to Die at five point six, F Nine opened at seventy million in May of twenty twenty one, and the rest of those uh, were around the fifty million range. Uh, right now, it's at sixty million, uh, but it originally it was going to be it was projected anywhere to seventy million. Um, and yeah, Jurassic World Dominion is an interesting po- uh, point because it got twenty nine percent of Rotten Tomatoes. They made one hundred and forty five million over the week. So. <laughs> There's a there's a, a, a an audience review that says Doctor Fate's character was not put. This is on Rotten Tomatoes, but not was not put to, to good use. He's way more powerful. Comedy <laughs> fell short with side characters very dry. However, the action graphics CGI was great. Storyline was good. I I gotta disagree with with the Doctor Fate character. Like yeah. he's way more powerful in the in in the comics. Yeah. Uh, that that we know of. I'm guessing. Um, you see that all the time. Superman is literally the most powerful. Yeah. superhero right. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. like you got you you gotta have you gotta give these characters a little bit of like physical flaws like wanda vision wanda for example right. she's super powerful right but what do you do when these like then they just always win and that would how boring yeah exactly you know what i'm saying you got you got to give them uh, their their strong and their weaknesses so when they fight they can look like they're being harmed so there's yeah. a little bit of stake where you feel like you're not gonna just be like oh he's gonna be fine like you're like oh you gotta be i don't know is he gonna come out of this yeah yeah well there's, a, there's another part of this too um and i we got a stream lab that came through here from uh <clears throat> Kwai underscore gone underscore quigs who says are the audience scores even worth anything anymore i read through them and ma- you maybe get one honest insightful one out of a hundred well right i mean i, I it's tough I, i'm of two minds of it because uh, i appreciate the question I think it's a good question Qui-Gon, but i would say you know their audiences for a reason, you know, and they yeah. don't, they don't, they're not critics for a reason, they're audiences. And if you want to go and you're like, okay, what does the audience say that I'm going to follow the audience because most nine times out of ten or seven times out of ten, they I agree with them. So great, that's your barometer, and there's nothing wrong with that. Critics are paid or or aspire to be hired to be paid for their reviews, so they have mm-hmm. to nitpick and analyze and look at everything. <laughs> does it all work? It's kind of uh, why we do what we do well because we're called to do it we like to do it and so um when you look for our stuff it's going to be a little more incisive most mm-hmm. of the time and so um so audience scores are there i think to kind of balance things out because uh, it helps you realize like how critics are looking at it, how audience is like you have to decide which one you want to listen to and i think that's mm-hmm. fair for the person who is deciding if they want to go see a movie or not you know, I always think Rotten Tomatoes takes way too much shit for what they do. I appreciate what they do. I think a lot of people don't. 
Uh, I don't think they, I don't think the people who are complaining about it, I don't think it, they understand the yeah. math that yeah. is yeah. Rot you... rotten tomatoes. Right. It's not like we all go, we're like 40%. It's like, no, it's, we have, you have a hundred people. Yeah. And you have a percentage of who voted this, who rated this movie a fresh or rotten. Yeah, right. Like, right. so if you understand just the basic of how like statistics and percentage works, that's how rotten tomatoes work yeah it's yeah. not like we don't go in and even if the people who put in because there's an option for the critics where you can rate your movie based on whatever scale you have. i don't do that i just pick yeah. rotten or fresh but you can do like you can give it an a b c it doesn't move that thing that tomato meter this way or that way it's yeah. whether you click on fresh or rotten that's it so e even if you see a critics thing that says eight out of ten it doesn't like it's mm -hmm. just adding an extra thing to their review yeah. so you can understand where they stand if you need that if you if some people need the letter grade yeah. or a, a whatever out of 10 but it is specifically based on who clicks rotten and who clicks fresh we're not grading we're not giving a number that doesn't right. count that it's it's tool it's a tool correct for you to use as a knowledgeable moviegoer to decide if you want to go see the movie now to me, when people go off on Rotten Tomatoes, to, it's a tool. So it's like blaming the hammer for a person using it to bash someone's skulls in. It's not the hammer's fault. The hammer is a tool. It's how the person uses that tool. That's what you should be putting your ire towards. And if you're a person who just looks at the score and decides you're going to see a movie or not, that's certainly your right, but that's not the way to use Rotten Tomatoes, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You can look at the score, and then you go, okay, who's a critic that I trust? Let's find their review, which is all linked there in the top reviews or top critics. You can yep. search out your favorite critic, click on their review and read it or watch it. And you can decide for yourself if you want to go see the movie. So to me, I think it gives you more access to more points of views, more opinions from knowledgeable film goer, film critics to get your idea, it all, yeah. to get an idea of what the movie is. And then also on the other side, the audience score is about people who maybe you have connection with or whatever. And Travis Earl brings an interesting point. He says, definitely critics have to look deeper, but most people just want to watch a movie. That didn't used to be the case. And I think that's the problem, too, is that we've sociologically changed from back in the heyday of the 70s and 80s and even the 90s, where critics, like you listened to the critics, you watched Siskel and Ebert, you read their analysis of a movie and, and then decided if you want to go see the film. There wasn't mm -hmm. this war between critics and uh moviegoers like we have now there's this idea that moviegoers see critics as some kind of like ruling class or the elite that's looking down on them that's not it at all critics are there to to analyze the film and break it down now yeah. do i think film goers are right in saying you know some critics enjoy destroying a movie yes and i hate that when i see that so um there's i think where the the divide always seems to be nowadays uh where critics seem to enjoy tearing up a movie but can't handle the heat if they get called out for it. <laughs> like, Hello, oh, social media. Can't yeah, hide. Yeah. Can't, can't behind, hide behind newspaper anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, ah, oh, back, back in the days before social media. I am so mad at this critic's <laughs> review. I'm going to write them a letter right. and then mail it, put a stamp on it, and it'll get to you, you know, a week <laughs> later. But then you, you don't know. You don't like, but, yeah. but now social media, people can directly go to your, they can at you. Yeah. On Twitter, yeah, exactly. on Instagram, whatever. Yeah. If they agree, disagree, whatever. Like, I've had people, like, because I like the movie, so I tweeted that I was yeah. enthusiastic about it. Um, not without its flaws, but I overall enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, people were like, oh, you're a clown. I was like, for enjoying a comic book movie? Okay. I know. It's crazy. And I was like, you haven't seen I was like, I, sir, I saw it Monday, way before you did. And this person, <laughs> like, wrote this on a Wednesday. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you haven't seen the film yet. Yeah, but... so you haven't seen the film. What are you talking about? But yeah, Oh, no, they, they said, they said, Oh, clown or whatever. And then they're like, well, kind of forever is going to be better now. And I wanted to, God, I don't, I'm not going to say it on air. Okay. I was going to say something really mean about right. it, but I didn't, I don't want to say, I didn't write it. Obviously <laughs> I'll tell you after what I'm going right, to say. Tell me after. I don't want to, I don't want to say it. it's, it's me. That's why I stopped myself. <laughs> Gotta have the willpower to be like, no, no, this delete, 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 delete. This isn't the hot isn't, mic, folks. No, this is not. Mic. <laughs> Even if it was, if it, even if I was a guest on the hot mic, it would be the cold mic, <laughs> <laughs> lukewarm mic, lukewarm mic. <laughs> so true, so true. Man. But like you know, but you're right, and that's the thing. Like I, 
I, I were like, great, you liked it. Great, you, you didn't. Like, it's, it's always the yeah. balance there you have to find. And yeah, I had someone tweet at me and going like, boy, you're nitpicking the hell out of this movie. Like, <laughs> why don't you just go with Raxon? And I was like, yeah, it's almost like gasp. It's my fucking job to do this. You know, <laughs> I make money doing this. So it's like, I kind of, you kind of have to, you know, pick and choose who you respond to. And well, they can't, that. they definitely can't say you're being paid by the WB. No, exactly. Yeah. I'm I hate it when own. they say that. Be, how does it feel to be paid by? I was like, where can you tell me when my paycheck gets here? Because yeah, I haven't seen yeah. a penny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a balance, and it's always a balance. And I I like to be honest, even against the my heroes, you know, even people like The Rock. Why I've said many times, I worship at the altar of The Rock. I still, but you I have do. to be honest because I have to look at myself in the mirror in the mornings, and I wanted it to work, and it didn't work for me. And I was sitting behind an Indian couple or in front of an Indian couple. Who were um, who had just chastised their son, which was hilarious on the phone for watching playoffs baseball when he should have been wor- doing his homework. <laughs> I heard the mom like chastising him, and then he came up and he was so excited to watch the movie. Then ha- an hour into the movie, I started to hear his exhales, <sighs> like that. He, <laughs> like, he wasn't liking oh, it. He wasn't into it. Yeah. Yet, so it's just the way it goes sometimes. But other people <laughs> clapped at the end of the movie at the screen mm-hmm. I was at in San Diego. So. Just a, you know, it's it's a certainly a mixed film, I would say, at the end of yes. the day. So, um, uh, there's two comments I want to call yeah, out in the chat sure. before we move on to our next topic. Sure. Uh, X uh, XYBA underscore James says there is confirmation okay. biases involved with audience scores. If you ah. pay to see a film, you are more likely to think positively of it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I thought that was interesting too. I don't and then, know. okay, how do you feel? You think that's true? I mean, confirmation bias. Yeah. I think I sit uh, in in a very different side of things, not because I've been doing this for a while, but I feel like. Obviously, you paid money for a movie ticket and, you know, we everybody knows it's not cheap to go to a movie these days. Um. I, I, I want to enjoy it and I want to have a good time, but also if I pay for it, if it was shit, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call it out because I'm going to be unhappy that yeah. I spend 14 plus dollars plus whatever concession I decide to intake yeah. <laughs> during the movie. I'm going to, I'm going to be disappointed a, a, about, about it, but that may be true for some people, you know, right, right. like I paid for it and yeah, you know what? I liked it. It's good. Right. And that's fine. That's great. But yeah, if, if I paid money, I'd be like, damn, I, wasted my time yeah. and i gave them my money and i didn't like it i don't think there's any hard and fast rules that's why you no. can't you can't say <laughs> one thing is concrete over another because i'm with wendy if i pay money and i don't like the movie i'm going to be even mm-hmm. more inclined to to kind of decimate it because i paid money to see it and it disappointed yeah. me yeah. Um, people say that about critics oh you got in to see the movie early so naturally or you know you're going to be more positive about it and look, they're not 100% inaccurate. There's a reason WB only invites certain critics to go see their movies early to build up buzz. And certainly the same thing happened again. Certain critics got in and were glowing about the movie afterwards. Uh, and so they, they, they understand that. I think it's unfair. I think studios should not do that. But it's a business and they feel like they're giving you access to something. So they want something in return. And we have seen some critics, not all, just occasional critics who are kind of massage their thoughts about a film or a movie so they can still maintain a relationship with a studio, a publicist, a director, or an actor. And that's um, that's where it becomes a little, like, you know, nothing's concrete. Everything, we're all human beings. People have a sliding scale of what they're willing to do to maintain a business. So that's, that's what you have to kind of factor this into. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the comment right below that, and then okay. we'll move on. Uh, Showing Blade. What a cool name. Regardless of Black Adam's quality, does it give you hope for the DCEU moving forward? Maybe a better director slash writer could serve The Rock better in the future. What do you think? It's a good question. Um, I can't have any faith right now because I don't know what Zaslav is going to do. And right now, it feels like an absolute shit show. So <laughs> I, I can't say whether this is a reflection of David Zaslav's approach to where he wants to go with the movie. Him or with the DCEU, him saying like, we can make the Flash better, and this film came out. Uh, I it makes me question a little bit. But this is under Walter Hamada's regime, who I know we're going to get to, who left DC uh, earlier this week. Now that the film is out, so 
Uh, do we blame that on Hamada? Do we not blame that on Zaslav? I think the Flash movie is going to be the one. That That's more Zaslav's. At. Yeah, that we know this is yeah. Zaslav's. He wa- this is the way he wants it. This is the where he wants to go with it 100%. So I think that's – and by, by extension, Michael DeLuca and, and uh, was it Abdi, Pamela Abdi? I think it's Pamela Abdi. Yeah, uh, oh, their yeah. approach to running things over there at DC. Um, we say maybe better director-writer. I mean, Jean Collet Sarah, I liked Jean Collet. Oh, he's a good director. He's a good director. I like yeah. Jean Cruz, so I don't know what happened here. Uh, and I don't know if it's necessarily serving The Rock because The Rock may have this point of view, Dwayne Johnson, that is, of what he wants a film to be. And maybe he doesn't want it to be deep. He wants it to be action oriented. Correct. He knows his fan base, and they don't Correct. want to be, you know, lost in trivial conversations about complex issues. Just paint it to me. Give me the broad brush strokes. Mm-hmm. Who's good? Who's evil? Let me do some cool action sequences, and then I'm out. Uh, and have some fun, funny moments, some fun flirty moments, and then I'm out. Uh, and that may be his formula uh, that works. And certainly, the box office proves that. And we'll see if, if people come out for this movie. Because if this movie surprises people, box office-wise, you can't say The Rock was wrong. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, think, uh, I think The Rock has a very clear... Uh, very... He makes his opinions and his visions clear. Yeah. That's, that's what I will say. He's also in a position where he is now... No, I mean, he's worked many, many yeah. years at this. Yeah. He's worked really, really hard. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to take any of that away from him. Uh, and he even said it, you know, in an interview where this movie, you know, came out when it did, it gave yeah. him more time to hone his skills as an actor Yeah. yeah. and to kind of separate himself for his, for the audience, the, the, for the broader audience yeah. to be like that there was the wrestling, the WWE, the rock, and he, that's still very much a part of him, but yeah. this is also the actor slash producer yeah. and entrepreneur you know literally everything yeah. so yeah. <laughs> yeah but for the for this honestly when i saw this film i understanding like black adam and his yeah. place in the dc uh comics i would like it to kind of set up and that's what i was saying like mm. i think maybe they're playing at the long game here yeah the the, the way that they pray to portray him more like kind of the anti-hero on uh, the reluctant hero yeah. as opposed to straight up villain out of the gate because we are hopefully going to see that face off between shazam and black adam yeah we all want that i want that very very badly um so that's why i'm kind of hoping yeah. that even if it whatever may happen with this first film as far as like how much money it makes i hope that they continue to make more moving forward because i want to build it up Mm -hmm. and let us get to that and if it takes the first one to kind of give it a second and you know mold it to something better and better and better as it grows within the dcu that's what i would like to see yeah yeah me too i mean just uh, hoping yeah here's the hope he's in he's been introduced so he's officially in the dc universe so where is he going to pop up next going to be very interesting for sure yes but let's Um, talk about the next topic all right, let's do that. Let's see if I got any more Streamlabs or Super Chats. No, keep sending them in, ladies and gentlemen. Send your bits and cheers and all of that. Let's do it. All right, what do we got, Wendy? Well, since we're uh, deep into the DCEU talk today, yeah, yeah. we will continue with this. So we were just talking about Walter Hamada, yes. who has been a part of the DC Films the president for like 15 years Yep, and has recently departed. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, he was waiting kind of for, for like, you know, the, the finalization of the process of exiting and all of that stuff. And I believe yeah. it has been finalized. So now he is departed. He's been running DC since 2018. Right. Um, and he was technically supposed to, to stay through 2023, but it looks mm. like with the merger and everything else, uh, it may be expedited his, his process through through yeah. that um so i oof, i don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing you know every every time a company goes through mergers when it's acquired by another company things like that we'll see change-ups like this but he's been in the company for so long yeah that it seems um i don't want to say sudden but in a way it kind of is it's, you know, is he just he's just like done? He's just maybe creatively they're just butting heads all over the place. Yeah. Well, this has been the fifth high ranking executive that has left since uh, Zaslav took over there at Warner Brothers. So what is that? What's the where's the common denominator? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
so for me, this is a weird play because I mean, certainly Ray Fisher is no fan of Walter Hamada, and Correct. that was oh, a, that's right, that's right. I remember that was a thing mm-hmm. there. So there were some, you know, it wasn't like Walter Hamada was making everything, spinning everything into gold. He had some strong outings. Certainly, Aquaman making the billion dollars, Wonder Woman, and oh, not Wonder Woman. I guess the the uh, Joker film. Those were under Hamada's regime. So. You got to give credit where credit is due. And he had a goal. He was going to do the Batgirl movie. They took it out from under him, which he, yeah. that almost made him walk when that news broke. And he wasn't even told about the news. He had to find it out. Oh, yeah, that sucked. Remember? Yeah. Uh, and he had these plans for these films to go to HBO Max, Zatanna, uh, Supergirl, these films that were going to have people of color as leads and going to expand the look and the feel of Warner Brothers and appeal to more quadrants. Um, and all that's essentially been put uh, in limbo or mothballed. And so why would he stay if Zaslav is going to just completely undercut everything he did? So it makes sense that he leaves. They con- uh, Ab- DeLuke and Abdi had convinced him to stay uh, through Black Adam. So now that it's out, he can go. Yeah. The, the sign that you take from all of this, is, is the I think the message that you can get out of all this, because of what I'm about to say, mm. Uh, Hamada did not uh, secure himself a producing deal with Warner Brothers Discovery. And just about every high-profile executive that leaves a studio um, creates that possibility, Mm -hmm. that signs a deal. I mean, Amy Pascal, for all those incredibly terrible uh, emails that were exposed, she stepped down, but she got herself a producing deal. Jeff Johns has a producing deal with uh wb discovery so hamada didn't take one didn't negotiate one uh and that may be because he doesn't want to work with zaslav under his regime under that regime mm-hmm. or it may be zaslav doesn't want to work with him and so it mm-hmm. must have been acrimonious this split so that speaks volumes to me if i'm hamada yeah if i'm kevin feige i'm on no. the phone with hamada right now and being like what can i put you in charge of here what do you want to shepherd here at Marvel, or if I'm Kathleen Kennedy, I look at Walter Hamada, I say, what do you want to work on in the Star Wars universe? Uh, so these are the people that I'd be looking at. Uh, these are people I hope are looking at Walter Hamada to bring in. Because I remember, James Wan and Walter Hamada worked really well together, so will Wan stay now that Hamada is gone? That's going to be an interesting question. Going great forward. question. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Because he was really good at New Line for a number of years. And so where uh, there's got to be a studio out there that wants to use him or, or an IP or a franchise that wants to uh, be in uh, work with him. So we shall see. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, but it's clear that he was probably frustrated, unhappy. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to leave a job that you've been at for 15 years. Yeah. And it's not just some, you know, cubicle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. This is he's uh, like C, like the president uh, of DC Films. So very curious to see, you know, Zaslav say say he's got a plan. There's a ten year roadmap to whatever, and they keep you know wanting to like. I think even in this article here, it's like they were Zaslav was looking for something like an exec like a Kevin Feige. Yeah, like they keep going back to like the Marvel stuff. Yeah. And I get it. Marvel's successful with, you know, their their plans and, and yeah, they, they have yeah. years of, of planning yeah. that we don't even know of because they only tell the audience what we're like on a need to know basis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel like DC's characters and stories are so rich. Mm-hmm. Like, at what point do we stop looking to Marvel yeah. and to to try to emulate that same same formula yeah you know you know i'm saying like yes it works well for marvel because that's what but like what what can work for dc because i feel like so far they've tried the whole thing and it's like not worked out right for them so maybe this that's just not the way it works for dc films and it and it makes me so frustrated because there's so like dc superheroes are so freaking cool yeah like yes. my, the, the very first superhero that I knew of was actually was Superman, Batman, right. and Wonder Woman, and then Spider Man, and then there came after that. But the 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 fact that they they and we've gotten some really good Batman films. Yes, we have. And I'm still waiting for that Man of Steel too. Still, <laughs> still waiting for it. I, I don't know how you you have 
Superman and yeah. do anything with him. So well, they, you know, that was we'll part see. of the news dump on the Hollywood Reporter on Monday that they are mm-hmm. taking pitches for Man of Steel too. So clearly, they're looking at that possibility. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a good question, though. I think from Yasman, maybe a couple. Mm-hmm. Of them, where he says, "Do you think Ray Fisher will return since he accused Hamad of interfering with the Justice League investigation?" This is very interesting, and I, I wonder if he'll sit down with Zaslov. That's what I'm saying, and, I, and I'm I'm wondering if Zaslov is seeing like the Snyder approach to things, and I'm not mm-hmm. saying he's going to emulate it, but the the he, things that I'm hearing in the wind are that Michael Keaton is going to be a one-off in the Flash movie, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And that he is maybe trying to convince Ben Affleck to come back permanently as the Batman in this version of the DC <laughs> oh universe. Oh, my God. Uh, convince, trying to convince Henry Cavill to come back as Superman in, DC, in this DC universe. You've got Gal Gadot. You've got Jason Momoa. It yeah. sounds from that article on, on THR on Monday that they are already writing a Flash sequel with Ezra Miller as the Flash, staying on as the Flash. No, they're not. Yes, that's what the article said in DHR. And so the with, idea mm, okay. with Ezra. Yeah, Continue. I know. I don't like the idea at all, but certainly ah, it okay. seems to be that's where they're going. So that's almost every member. Yeah, Dustin's the- right there. He's right there. <laughs> There's no way they're getting it to Grant. But like give it to Grant. <laughs> so Ray Fisher is the only missing piece. And now with Hamad out of the way. And maybe, just maybe, this was an element of the acrimony between both of them is that Zaslav said to him, I'm going to find a way to bring Ray back as, as Cyborg. And maybe Hamas like, I can't be here if you're going to bring Ray back. He called me all kinds, he accused me of all kinds of shit. And these independent investigations cleared me. You're almost confirming that, it's, that he was right by bringing him back. So I wonder if that is a possibility that was roaming around there uh, causing the problem between both of him and Zaslav. So I don't know. Do you think they bring Ray Fisher back for Cyborg? Or should they? If, if, I mean, I loved Cyborg, especially in in that extended version, the Snyder Cut. Holy crap, man. I just, I really love what he did with that character. A character Mm -hmm. that, like, to me, I didn't know too much of going in to the Justice League and, and then, you know, saw the little bits of in, in, in the Whedon one, and I was like, well, okay. I, yeah. I wish there was a little bit more, and then I saw the Snyder one. I was like, oh, my God. We missed, we totally missed out on this freaking character mm-hmm. and, and the depth of it, and, like, I want so much more. So I would love, but I feel like Ray Fisher went through so much through this film that yeah, I think it's going to take a lot of reassuring for him to come back to make sure it's a safe set for him. Because, like, God forbid he has to go through all of that again. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's already, like, so I think it, it'll it be, it'll they'd have to really give him a good pitch on, on coming back in his working condition specifically. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and not, you know, put him through what, what a lot of the cast members, not just him, a lot of the cast members mm-hmm. went through. Yeah. On that yeah. film. So, yeah. It's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll see. We'll see. They're not bringing Snyder back. I know that. <laughs> There's no way they're bringing Snyder back. But everybody Even else, with Zaslav? Yeah, even with Zaslav. I don't think he would do that. I think that would cause such an uproar. <laughs> yeah, I really do think it would. Um, all right, let's uh, move on to our next thing. Or shall we, uh, Are we trending here? What, what's going on? Yeah, we're trending. All right, let's do it. Uh, where are you, little video? Let's do it. <laughs> I need that. I need to add that song. That was fun. That's a good little song. I like that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, all right. What what is trending here in the world of uh, entertainment or in, the, in our world? Period. Oh, we got we got lots to talk about. We got the McDonald's Happy Meal, adult Happy Meal to talk about. We got the Halloween buckets. We got Death Note. We got some Disneyland updates. But first, we got to go to K-pop yeah. corner. Let's K-pop corner. Um, so BT. Let's we'll start with BTS. BTS okay. has to. Uh, they're about to take essentially a group hiatus because they won't be able to perform or do anything as a group. Uh, I think by the end of this month, that's when it's going to start. And then uh, they won't probably resume group activity 
until 2025, sometime in 2025, yeah. due to the military service. So BTS member Jin is going to be the first to enlist in the Korean uh, military. And I think the service period, I want to say it's like 18 to 20 months or something like that. Basically two years. Essentially, I, th I think. Yeah. So they, they knew that this is, was, you know, potentially was going to happen and they delayed it as much as they can because you have to serve by 30. Yeah. And Jin is 30 this year. Wow. I, I believe so. And that's, uh, you know, friend of the show, Laura Siri cool. That's, that's yep. her bias. That's her alt. So she texted me the second that they announced it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's at, at least 21 months. Sorry. Tw uh, it says here, Korean South Korean law states that all men must serve a 21 month term in the military. Uh, By their 20. Percent? Yeah. So uh, Taiwan does too. I don't yeah. know about how long, but I know my uncle had to go and serve in the military. Israel has well. that. Gal Gadot oh. served. Oh, right. Yeah. Men and women, huh? Yeah. Men and women. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, well, explain the drama here because I saw some of the drama on Twitter. People were like, they were forced. Uh, they chose. It, it's um, not forced. What's all the drama? What's all the drama about with this? I think we have to understand the wording and how mm. things work in a country that is not in the States okay. or any other country who does not mandatory have mandatory requirement for their men to serve. Yeah. Yeah. In the U.S., there's no draft. We don't draft anymore here. Right. Thank God. So it's right. So it's um, based on if you want to serve your country yeah. and then you go into the service here in the States in countries like South Korea. And granted, I don't know all the details because uh, I'm not South Korean. I don't live there. So I can only speak to what I understand. And Taiwan has very similar rules yeah. that all men um need to serve i think it's between 18 to maybe not as young as 18 but they have to serve by their 28th birthday bts yeah. got a little bit they put in a bit of an extension due to their work yeah um because they're not just sitting home doing whatever like they yeah, are true. booked and busy um so they do it, it is a mandatory it's a it's the law in that country so you can't like i don't know i don't know if i necessarily agree with like the headlines that say like bts forced to serve it's it's not forced because it's 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 they, they all know this growing up yeah so they have to do it it's it's a part of it right it's it's just a part i don't know if there's an exemption like if you have some sort of like if you're you know disability mm. physically and, and and what i i'm not sure about that but bts knew this all male idols know this bts God, isn't the first male idols to go into the military they take a hiatus from the group and they're not going to be the last right, right big bang did that all the members did that because they all have to. Did it's a part Cy, of it. Did Sai serve? Did probably. Serve? Wow. Probably he's he's older though. So yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. That can in <laughs> most. Back. Yeah, maybe he, maybe he debuted <laughs> after. Yeah. <laughs> maybe after. I don't. I actually don't know. You know, I'm gonna look that up. Um, yeah. But so it's not it's not served, and they love their country so 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 much. Yeah. So they knew that they were going to do this. So they I don't think they were looking for like a specifically a way to get out of it. They were just trying to figure out their career and their job and their fans right, right. versus versus what is required of them to do as citizens of Korea, of South Korea. Yeah. So, so, so that's what it is. It's, it's, I, I don't, BTS, they're such honorable, like people. Yeah. They're very like all love, anti-bullying, all that stuff. Like they, which has nothing to do with really the military, but what I'm saying is they are, they are good stand up people. Yeah. And they weren't trying to, get out of it by any means they were just trying to find a solution of what's going to work best for their career and korea understands this they're looking to lose probably millions in revenue yeah when bts goes on this long of a hiatus oh yeah they're they're making so much money tourism alone for right. south korea like they know this but they're going to do right by their country and they're going to go all individually serve so they all they're not going to all go in at once jin is first the older right. members first, and then it'll trickle down to to the Makne, which is I think J.K. Yeah. being being the youngest. So that's why they're gonna have to halt their like group stuff, and that's probably why they did that concert. There, there was a, a yet to come yeah. concert in Busan that that had I known early about it, I don't know, I probably would have flown to Korea for it just yeah. to see them. But yeah, um, it's a big deal because apparently there've been some Korean stars who have lost their 
status as celebrities um, when they didn't, when they ran when they contest. didn't go. Yeah, like there's an article here from uh, KoreaBoo.com saying mm. MC Mong, uh, Song Swing Hyun, mm -hmm. uh, Kim Myu Yul, and um, Steve Yu uh, had some issues or controversy surrounding their um, military service. Steve Yu being the most famous, apparently. Uh, he gave up his Korean citizenship to acquire an American one uh, so they wouldn't have to serve. Wow. Uh, I can yeah. see why I can I can see the the people of South Korea would Yeah. And also the government criticize said that. It's this was an act of desertion. He like he deserted by not serving. It's serious over there. Yeah, it is. He they banned him from the country. <laughs> which is oh which God. is huge. I mean huge. So yeah. I served twice. So I served twice. Well, there you go. So, yeah, I think. It's yeah. So we have to. Yeah, we have to look at it from a different lens. Like we're, yeah. we're here in the States. Like it's it's very different. Yeah. It's it's essentially optional if you would like to serve your country or, or not. Right. Um, the, the first time Sai served, though, he um, he was appearing on television shows and doing concerts <laughs> while he was in. The, so the Seoul court was like, that's enough. You're going to be redrafted in the military. Oh, no. no concerts, <laughs> no fucking appearances. <laughs> So I think that's, uh, you know, you know, you can't fault a young man for, you know, wanting yes, to be successful. Yes, yes. And that was also, I think uh, the, maybe they're slightly more lenient because uh, yeah. uh, Taeyong and, uh, oh, what's his name? The 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 other, oh, I can't remember, from, yeah. from Big Bang, like they for sure put on a couple concerts for the military. Right, right, right. But they put on some concerts, but they, but they, they didn't, you know, it wasn't like there's no backup dancers. They were still, you know, no makeup in their military haircut right in their uniform and they and they performed they had a good time and i imagine like Jin will get to do something like that but he is still going to have yeah things that are required it's it's not it's not like a i'm it's not going to be a cakewalk for them it is no. <laughs> it's kind of crazy that you go traveling the world with young women and people screaming your name and screaming at everything you do and then boom you're stuck on a field somewhere doing push-ups like it's just kind of crazy yeah. <laughs> I mean they're very fit so they'll be I'm sure you, yeah I'm sure we'll you be. don't go through the training years and debut for nothing you gotta you gotta be strung up here more than anything else <laughs> that's true that's <laughs> so true. yeah Travis Earl uh, saying Elvis did it well Elvis was forced into it because of they were drafting then yeah stuff well but also because there was stuff going on with uh, what was good, like they kind of touch on it in the Elvis movie that he was uh, a little out of control, and uh, uh -huh. senators and the people in the South were not too happy with what he was doing, so they made him go to the service for a couple of years. I don't think it was because to save Tom Parker. I think he went into something to kind of calm him down a little bit, and he came out and came back out, and and, and that was that. The Beatles were mm -hmm. there, so it, you know, yeah, it wasn't forced, but certainly he didn't have an option, so to speak. Um, all right, let's uh, let's yeah. see. We have any more stream? We have any Streamlabs super chats? Uh, no, but we got a couple of followers. Wingblade followed. Thank you, Wingblade. Thank what, you. what took you so long? Uh, J D O A H forty five underscore fire followed. So it's very nice. If, yeah, if you're not following the channel or subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. Do yeah, please. Um, and send in your bits, cheers, and Streamlabs as we go along. Wendy, what's our next thing on the trending? Uh, we were in K-pop corner just a little bit longer because oh, okay, I got to yeah. go to. Oh no, you're fine. We got to go to uh, Dusted and I and. Uh, Friend of the show who was in the chat, Zach Mendoza, who gave oh, nice. me a ticket to go to this, what they marketed it as the ultimate or something, big word, you just, whatever verb you can find. Yeah. Uh, co uh, Korean concert experience. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Zaslav's calling you. He heard you talk. Yeah. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> what? What did what? you, what 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 did you say? say about me? What did I say um, about <laughs> this Korean uh, music festival called Camp K A M P. I actually don't know what it stands for. But oh yeah, I saw your Instagram stories for this. What is this? Holy shit, man! Camp L A. What is this? Camp Los Angeles was such a mess. I almost bought tickets to this. I oh. saw that tickets were going on sale, and it was during KCON when okay. they went on sale. And I was like, ooh, there were artists like Kai from EXO, um, okay. Somi, who I love from from YG. Yeah. Uh, gosh, who else? Uh, Bam Bam, just the uh, yes, uh, uh, Monster X, who I love, and I'm like, ooh, this looks like yeah. a good lineup. They had two days, and it was two hundred dollars for a two day pass, and okay. I was like, you know what? All right, because one concert ticket easily yeah. costs over two hundred dollars. Like Stray Kids cost me two hundred plus just to go, go and see them. Wow. So I was like, two hundred for two days, 
not bad. Right. So I was going to do it, but then I waited on it because I was like, well, what if the price goes down? Thank God I waited. Yeah. Because it was, I was getting ready for the concert, to, to, like the concert was coming up and I, I was like, oh yeah, it's happening. So Zach in the chat yeah. messaged me okay. and I was, he was like, hey, are you going to go to camp? I was like, ah, oh, no, the tickets, you know, I was just spending a lot of money on Blackpink. Like, I, I think I'm just going to like sit this one out and he's like well they're actually giving away free tickets i'm like what the heck wow. by then all those ticket free tickets had been distributed but okay. he was able to snag an extra so he was like do you want a couple and i was like oh my god if you can you know impart me with them yes please why, so he was why like why were they giving away free tickets is it because people weren't going or they just wanted people to go on the nose so apparently they weren't so this is at the rose bowl very iconic Ooh, venue fuck that oh <laughs> I've been to the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is uh, is trash. No offense. The Rose Bowl oh is. God. I've never had a good experience at the Rose Bowl ever. Oh my God! It is. Oh it my is, God! It, it's the concrete structure with madness inside of it. That's that's all it is. Man. That's all it is. I've been there four times. I've I didn't have a good time any time I've ever been there. So it was my first oh, time at the Rose sorry Bowl. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. It was my it. very first time at a Rose Bowl. Oh, was it? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh my so, God. So How I'm, I'm glad it was it was camp that that put me there. So I believe Zach's yeah. gonna be in the chat to correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. They were actually giving away these free tickets because they weren't selling Oof. enough tickets and they weren't filling up the venue. Uh, and they were like, "Oh my God, we gotta fix it. We gotta we gotta just give away the whole section." <laughs> there were these whole sections that were just given <laughs> away for free on top of the. So imagine wow. you pay two hundred dollars for oh. this. Be and right concert, yes, and like our seats were good. I wow. was so happy with my with my seat. I had a great view. It wasn't up close. I don't really need her to be super close, but it right, was right. good. So that was mess number one. Okay. People were pissed. People yeah. were like, "What the f is this?" Right. Uh, we should right, get we so. should get partial partial refund. Yeah. You know, like people. I knew people were trying to sell their tickets to because they got free tickets oh. and this and that. Then came the artists all of a sudden being dropped from the lineup. So oh, shit. done. Kai, this was with the 24 hours before the show went on. Wow, wow, wow. Kai, not coming. Monster X, not coming. Super Junior, not sure because not everybody, it was visa issues. And there was a lot of like, yeah. it was beyond the control of the promoter and the artist's agency. And I was like, did y'all file for the wrong work visa? <laughs> because you have, to, you have to understand for some of these um, K-pop idols. Yeah you can't just automatically assume that it's going to go fast because it's a working visa. Right. They, because they're, they're South Korean. Some of them, their nationalities aren't South Korean. Oh yeah. Fair yeah. Point. Like their citizenships. So it might take longer or shorter depending on a lot of factors. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. camp essentially dropped the ball and it was like almost less than half of the Oof. artists that was initially, Oof. especially day one, they want to have like it dropped down to like two or three. So they had to, increase they have to ask some of the uh performers that are coming on only day two to perform also on day one to fill up wow so they performed if you just look up any sort of video camp yeah. day one on tiktok it was bare bones like wow. nobody was there it was really really sad so zach says yeah the rumor is they weren't selling tickets so they were giving away tickets to make it look good yeah, yeah. to the artist That's and they were also saying that they were going to extend the sets to make it longer so day two was technically supposed to end at 10 we ended at 805 because <laughs> none of the sets were extended and you could tell the artists came yeah. on they were obviously they were happy that you know they were performing for the fan. yeah, the fans for sure. supported them and the people who maybe bought tickets to see Monster X who obviously had visa issues. So none of them came still decided to go to support yeah. the artists. And I saw a lot of EX, a lot of EXO light sticks because you, you know, light sticks is a part of like the, the Korean K-pop music culture Right, right. is you, you bring it and you light them up for the artists. And even if you're holding a light stick of not of the person who's on stage, you light it up for them to show that you're supporting them. Right. No matter what, you don't want to perform to a black ocean. That is, really really bad they call it the black ocean that means no light stick nothing it's being wow. lit up wow. <laughs> essentially the audience hates you <laughs> they're they, they don't like you katie perry got that oh because she wow. made fun of um bts army on stage no 
And she was like, oh, it looks like uh, you, have, you looked that up. It's the people turned off their light sticks. They, everybody's light sticks was, was being lit up. Billie Eilish, everybody else was being lit up for them. They're like, yeah. And she made a joke about, oh, isn't it past you guys' bat- bedtime? BTS Oh, Army. no. And I'm like, we got to stop with this. Like, K-pop is for kids. Like, I don't, yeah. I, I know 70-year-olds especially who love someone, K-pop. Yeah, especially someone who wore whipped cream bras that shot whipped cream out of her boobs. Like, who are you to judge <laughs> the childishness of an act or whatever, like Katy Perry has got no leg to stand on in this considering what she's worn through the years with her candy cane dresses. And, and look, I love Katy, but you gotta be honest, you know, it's like, she's built on the whole, like appealing to the younger demographic. So mm-hmm. yeah, that was a little bit, but that's Katy. Something she shoots her mouth off sometimes. I don't know. And then she it, was it, like, it why are people leaving? And I was like, you don't mess with the yeah. army. You don't mess with the ETS. You don't, you, need to you be, don't. And I was like, they were there for your show. Yeah. yeah, they were lighting up their light sticks pink until she said that. They're like, bye, <laughs> turned it off. Bye, so that essentially was what happened. So Zach Mendoza has got some more uh, uh, info about camp. The rumor was camp didn't pay the artists up front, which Oof. Epic High kind of confirmed. So none of the groups wanted to pay for expedited visa. Of course. Yeah, I wouldn't either. What the fuck? Well, no shit. That's terrible planning. Terrible. Uh, and. And then it was awful. And uh, he continues to write, I think only one group, Super Junior, pay for expedited visa. And it was like 4K, but they did it for the fans. Right. Yeah. Super Um, Junior saved day one. Super Junior and Icon saved day one. (laughs) What is going on here, Wendy? That is day one camp. It was also raining. That's day one. That's Momo Momo Land on stage doing the best that they can do. Oh. That is sad. Is that not awful? That's with yeah. free tickets. People were so mad that they were like, they're not going to go. Um, on top of that, there were a lot of tech issues. One of the most disrespectful things mm. is that at every K-pop concert, um, there is a translator because obviously um, English is a second language yeah, to yeah. most K-pop idols. A lot of them are fluent. A lot of them know it well enough. Like RM is self-taught from BTS. Right. And he can, but even they still have translators so they can be more comfortable in their, their way of communication in their native language. Um, so usually there's a translator. The translator for K- camp was so bad. Like I understood more of what the, what the art was saying with my very small knowledge of K-drama learned Korean yeah. than what this translator was putting out. And when I went, Momo Land had a translator that was like barely translating. By the time Espa came out, who was the last act of day two, um, you know, I think... Uh, Karina went to say something into her mic and she said it in Korean, like full chest confident. And then she waited. She gave it a beat for the translation to kick in. And it was just silence. And she goes, oh, is there no, in English, oh, is there no translation? The other member who is very fluent in English was backstage getting, I think, some wardrobe issues uh, uh, taken care of. And she has to run back out on stage. I'll translate for you. And I'm like, (laughs) oh my God. AZ Batfish says this Firefest 2. So people <laughs> literally on TikTok were making fun of it, saying we're calling it Camp Firefest. Oh. Camp Firefest. Oh. It was awful. I had a good time because I yeah. went in fully. There was zero expectation. Right, right. <laughs> Me and Zach, I, cool. I say Zach and I had a had a really good time going. But if I pay two hundred dollars, I would my anger issues, I wouldn't have gone. Yeah, I would have been pissed. And then apparently they arrested. Oh my! <laughs> oh, play the clip. Yeah. I oh, can't play the sound. You can play the sound. It's fine because it, it you you can't hear any of that. It's fine. Okay. Oh wait! Oh, that's yes. you, I can't see. You have to scroll to oh. a different. Oh, is it? Oh, oh, sorry about that. Oh, yeah. yeah click yeah, on the, the one that you're showing, yeah, uh, and I'll I'll not, explain. Yeah, because this uh, it's poor girl is like getting dragged off. Oh, there's a reason. You hear. Here we go. So she's getting dragged off. Mm-hmm. I don't know who was on stage at the time. Yeah. It is the end of our set. I don't think it was Icon. Yanked away. Okay, so. What was that all about? Uh, so there was a thing in K-pop yeah. called, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. I've never, I've only seen it written. I've never seen it okay. pronounced. Sasang? Yeah. They're essentially like TMZ. Of K-pop. They're essentially what? K- the TMZ of K-pop. Oh. So what K-pop industry, the the people who work behind the scenes hate more than anything else are paparazzis. Oh. Hate it. 
you do not bring a telescopic type of lens right. to concerts. If you have a regular camera with very little zoom, phone, whatever, they don't care. Yeah. This girl apparently sn- somehow was able to sneak it in in her giant tote wow. bag, which you're not even supposed to have because it's clear bags all the way only. Right. Um, and she was taking, I believe, this is what I've heard, these yeah. photos. And then to sell it or whatever to the paparazzi, and oh. that was a that was a that's a big no no. You can see the guy on the it's left the in the black yeah. that's holding the bag. So mostly yeah. like like that's what's in it. Right. And they also they also like stalk. Uh, I'm not saying her, but the right. signs are, are also known to like stalk the idols. Do you think she's like she's probably she she's dialing up her Instagram to get everybody's face? I don't know what she, I don't know that's what she's crazy. trying to trying to do. But look, like if you appropriate. If, if you act appropriately, accordingly, if yeah. somebody says, they'll give you a chance. Apparently, they gave her a chance. Put it away. People are complaining about her. Wow. That's what I've heard on TikTok. Okay. Is because yeah. people were reposting that on TikTok. Like, right. essentially, if, if you have one of those big lenses, you can just, you know, people, please, can you put that away? Please put that away. Yeah. They put it away. No problem. You can stay for the concert. She right. apparently didn't want to put it away. And she was bugging people with, with her giant freaking lens. People were just trying to enjoy already a crap <laughs> Very disorganized event. So, yeah, that's what happened. Madness. Madness. That's what I believe happened. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, we got 50 minutes left of the show, Wendy. We got to get through these things. Yes. Uh, what do let's you want to hit on? Uh, let's go to McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's go Happy Meal. Let's so, go to McDonald's. I'm dead. Let's go to McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's, are ha- they, they decided to put out a adult Happy Meal. Okay. And they had these really weird looking toys that came with it, yeah. if you wouldn't mind putting that up. Yeah, let me see if uh, I can with, take with, a look at this. So when I heard adult Happy Meal, I was like, okay, it's going to come in like a luxe cool box with some cool toys, maybe nostalgic stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're going to save that for later. If you want to look up... Um, Which one? Just look up adult Happy Meal. Okay, all right. Because that's, uh, that's, that's, that's... But save that, save that tab. Okay, okay. Let me see. Adult Happy Meal. Got it. Okay. So Go we, were, we were looking forward to that. I didn't get it because I saw the toys and I'm like, what the crap is this? I don't want to pay money. For, I'll just get a regular meal. Yeah. So essentially, it's a regular meal with a, with a toy. But yeah. the toy is so weird looking. It's like the Hamburglar and some of the other, you know, iconic McDonald's okay. characters that we don't really see these days. But it's not just like a figuring of them. It's like they have multiple eyes. Yeah. It's is, very is it for, odd. Is this for uh, Halloween or what? No, that's the next one. Oh, okay. That's two separate things. Okay. Here, let me see if I can look it up. I don't have a link. I... That you didn't send a link in the docs I'm looking right now. Gotcha. Let me see, look see. it up. I, I see that quick. these toys are listed. Oh, I see. Okay. Hold uh-huh. On. Hold uh-huh. on. These are they are listed. Yeah. People are collecting them and they are being listed for thousands resale. Those are the toys. I don't know why they feel like we had they had to give us four eyes yeah uh i was not even remotely interested in getting a limited edition adult happy meal the right. second i saw the it's just not for me if that's something that you guys really enjoy obviously i hope you were able to track down all four without paying thousands of dollars because that's right. how much you're being resold yeah but that is the adult happy meal yeah. And then just to expedite through this, uh, continue scrolling. What yeah. we see right here, this just started a few days ago. This is the Halloween Happy Meal. So this is another nostalgia thing. Back in like the, I think, early 80s. No, sorry. Late 80s, early 90s. They had these really cute Halloween pails. And yeah. they were and, and they were like decent, like, like, you know, harder plastic pails with a full functioning lid on top. Yeah, yeah. That kids can take and go trick or treating in. So they brought it back in 2022 with a fake lid because what you see up there is just a little plastic flap yeah, yeah. that emulates what a, the shape of a lid, but it doesn't have function. The lid, the, the bucket itself does not actually close. Right. It doesn't have oh, some sort I of see, lid to close it. Okay. It is also smaller and the plastic seems to be thinner, um, okay. but they marketed these in their marketing material. Not that one, but like a previous one. Right. People literally... They literally pulled up like the old buckets and they used that in the marketing material, but then they gave oh. everybody something else. So a lot oh. of people are straight up disappointed and I am glad yes. I didn't fall into the trap and get one because wow. I don't really need McDonald's in my life. I had fried chicken yesterday and I regret it. So <laughs> there's that. Wow. 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 Yeah. wow. Interesting. That's some okay. McDonald's issues. 
I didn't know that people. Yeah, uh, the people are saying uh, who is who wrote this BuzzFeed article? Uh, Crystal Rowe. Crystal Rowe saying that the uh, pale is is smaller uh, uh, than it used to be. Uh huh. The measure just under five inches tall at their widest and are about six inches. Uh, a tall, yeah. So five inches tall, five uh, six inches wide. Um, and she's thinking maybe I was smaller as a kid, but no, I think it's smaller than it used to be. So good point. Yeah. Um, and we can even compare the ones that you were mentioning, Wendy, that used to be the sizes there. So there's the ones back then. Look how cute they were with an actual right. dome. Yeah. With dome actual dome lid. Yeah, you're right. Interesting. This this one, it, it, the quality gives 99 cent store. Yeah, well, <coughs> COVID, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's going cheap nowadays with stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Material is so expensive. We're in recession. Yeah, a recession. Everything is inflated. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, what, what, you want to do one more thing and then we'll, we'll do our uh, recommended stuff. Anything yeah. you want to hit on? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll do this one really quickly. Everybody remember when Netflix did um, a live action Oof. Death Note Woof. directed by Adam Wingard? Yeah. With Nate Wolf as and and Lakeith Sanfield as as our leads as um, Ellen Light, yeah. so it looks like now we knew this. Um, the Duffer Brothers are working on this as part of their Upside Down Pictures. They're right. doing a, another uh, Death Note adaptation. This is going to be a live live action series, not movie, okay. and they're going to be adapting the popular Japanese manga and anime series. Um, they just acquired a writer. Uh, and she's also going to executive produce. Okay. Uh, and this is Halia Abdel Magid. I okay. probably mess up her name. I am so sorry. So she is a longtime fan of the manga and oh, the good. anime series. She speaks Japanese. She's yeah. uh, previously lived in Tokyo. So I hope that she takes some of that yeah. and put that into this live action adaptation. Um, and she has... She's going to be uh, writing consultation on the series adaptation for The Talisman as well. And that is the Stephen King novel. Yeah, with Peter Straub. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So basically, do you know Death Note? Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I'm, I was aware of the manga and I became even more aware of it after um, Emma Fife tweeted out her hatred of the live. <laughs> and I said this at the time. I was like, if you can get um, Emma Fife to hate your manga adaptation, you've really messed up. So uh, I remember going back and getting more knowledge on this death note yeah uh yeah the the adam wingard one i watched it i made it through 20 minutes before i angrily turned it off it did not serve yeah. what good was in in the series uh, everything that was good and smart about it yeah. it's just a, it's a you would enjoy it. it's a very smart anime light yeah. that, that's yeah. what it's a cat and mouse game between right. light and l and the writing is incredible. And the two of them constantly is, you know, like one outsmarts the other. Yeah. yeah. And it's so good. And the, that live action movie took so much away Ugh. from them. I mean, it was weird. I don't know. I didn't like it. So I'm hoping that this one is going to be better. I am tempering my expectations because I was burned already by the previous one. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see we'll see how this one does but i i i hope i hope this one's much better than the other one. <laughs> yeah, so too yeah for the that's rain. it yeah that's All that right. and then one last thing before okay. we move on to the final thing magic okay. band plus has arrived at disneyland park Ooh. so you can i got mine um we have there's early access for magic key holders disney vacation club members and cast members um but if you have if you're like traveler and you've gone to walt disney world and you've yeah. got a magic band plus there it now works in the park. So this gives you quicker access into going to the park. So instead of pulling up the app or having the paper tickets on your phone or, you know, whatever, you can just yeah. like they have a little machine. You tap to it and then there's RFID in this wristband and then you can just tap into the park without pulling up your phone. We tried it out. Um, it's got some flaws, but okay. um, they're the full rollout. It goes wide um, for general public on the 26th. So I call this like the, the soft opening period. Right. Right. For them to work out the kinks. And there's a fun game that you can play at galaxy's edge where it's called the bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. And you use this to collect bounties from a bounty board and you have to explore galaxy's edge to find bounties. And your sink um, works as a tracker, attracts your location. And oh. so if you're too cold from where your bounty is supposed to be, it'll glow red and it'll buzz. Um, and if it's uh, green, then you're walking in the right direction and you can hopefully find your bounty. Wow. 
it's pretty fun. We, we did it for like a solid hour. I was like, let's just try it. We're running around. I was having a good time. <laughs> Stopping to get food halfway through. I know Wendy Lee was waiting for those bands to show up. I know that. I she was complaining about it a few weeks ago on the show. I was. Saying it was, was taking too long. Yeah, I was so. like, come on. So it's here. That's what it looks like. And right. uh, we just got the basic ones because like all the other designs are cute, but I needed to. I wanted something that would just like match the outfit. Yeah, yeah. And this is more my flavor. So, right And it was also on the cheaper end. Oh, good. Good. Oh, you yes. have to buy the bands as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's optional. You don't have to have it. Oh, okay, okay. It is purely optional. If you have the money, if you feel like you want to get it, great. If you don't want to get it, you're not going to miss out on anything right, right. at Disney. Um, these are $34.99, but you get a discount if you're a Magic Key oh, okay. holder. So yeah. we got ours for less than that. Basically less the tax because we have 10% off. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's get into what we recommend, right? Yes. So it's a, what we we're recommending, week. what is coming soon. We got a weekend full of stuff. So what you uh, got? let's talk about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, obviously we talked about Black Adam, so we don't need to do that. But Banshees of Inishirin is coming out this weekend. That is such a fantastic film. Do not listen. Well, I don't want to say that because I hate when people <laughs> say that. But – there are some American critics who are uh, going after the film, and uh, I would encourage you to go and see it on your own. Decide your own points of view about the movie. It is a very Irish film, so just letting yeah. you know that ahead of time. But it's fantastic. Uh, what actors. does that mean? It, it's just very much a slice of life of Ireland, which is its perspective is ah, Irish. Okay. Its point of view is Irish. The way it handles issues in the film is Irish. So it's very much an Irish film. You know, you talked about earlier, we talked about how certain things are translated in a certain way or understood from one country to another, even within countries that speak English, there's differences in how they approach certain things. So this is very much an Irish film, but it is so good. Colin mm -hmm. Farrell is great. I, I have a feeling he's a dark horse candidate for best actor nomination. Uh, Brendan Gleeson is great. Uh, and uh, 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 Oh God, uh, the guy who played Barry Keong is in this mm -hmm. movie as well. And is so good. Uh, and the actress, I can't remember her name now offhand, who does the voice of Friday in Iron Man. She was in Rome. She is the sister. I hope she gets a nomination for uh, Best Carrie Sport. Condon. Yes, Carrie Condon. She's so good. I hope she nope. gets a nomination yes. for Best Actress. Oh, Best Yes. Actress. So yes. it's a good movie directed by the guy who did three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. So uh, Mark McDonough, who also did In Bruges. So bringing those guys back together again. So go see it. I encourage you all to go see it for sure. What about you? Yeah, I echo your thoughts. The, yeah. That's a that's a great film. It got to the point where I was like, should I be laughing at this? Because I kind of want to laugh right. at it. Right. There was like comedy, but then the more and more you get into the film, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Is oh this real? Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. No, it's it's great. Uh, it's sitting at currently 99% on Rotten yeah. Tomato, Tomato Meter, 221 review. I need to add mine to it, uh, yeah. which I will probably do after this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. For coming soon, well, it's already here. Okay. Um, and that's something I'm looking forward to. I haven't started yet, but I like the trailers. It's very much my vibe. The Queen, Michelle Yeoh is in it. So, oh, you know, yeah. I'm watching The School of Good and Evil. On oh, Netflix. yeah. Yeah, there's it's a, a novel adaptation. So the books are the audiobooks are also uh, on my my audible waiting to be listened to. But currently uh, I am listening to Way Skyward uh, okay. audiobook by Brandon Sanderson. And he is the writer for I think probably most popularly known for his Mistborn series. He okay. is also the author who took over the Wheel of Time series to finish mm -hmm. out the series um, after the uh, death of the original author, Robert Jordan, who like handpicked him to do it. So right. wow. uh, it's a great read. It's about a girl who lives on a, a, a planet being uh, at, in the danger of being invaded by an alien race who dreams to be a pilot and kind of the her journey throughout all of that. I just started, I'm like chapter three and I am loving it. Right. Loving um, it. As far as stuff you can watch uh, on TV right now or on streaming right now for me, Three things for you real quick. Love is Blind season three is back. <laughs> Love is Blind is back. My girlfriend only let me watch one episode last night, but I tricked her to let me watch three last night. So what? I, How? <laughs> um, because she was working on a project, and I said, well, if you're not going to bed, we don't need to stop the TV from playing the, the, the she doesn't. She didn't need to watch it with you. It's not one of the ones that you watch together. Oh, no, we do watch together. She, she <laughs> me, and she was working while she was also watching, so I was able to sneak in two, two and a half episodes, to be fair. We stopped Amazing. And, Midway through the third at 10 30, we're like, we gotta go to bed. Um, so it, it's back. I don't think the character the people are as interesting as the first two seasons, 
but it's still an interesting show. Uh, and uh, it's going to be fascinating to see who who stays together, who doesn't, and, and what happens by the end of the show. That's out. Uh, the Peripheral is out on Amazon, on Prime yes. Video, rather. Uh, the first two episodes, Chloe Grace Moretz, the William Gibson uh, uh, store, uh, series, they are doing that. Uh, uh, I would recommend that highly as well for you to watch. He, he, he created essentially Cyberpunk, so you want to watch this as an extension of that. Um, and then what's the third thing? Oh, Alaska Daily, the new show with Hilary Swank that's on ABC. I highly recommend that. We've seen the first two episodes. Love it. So oh. uh, Hilary Swank is doing great work in this series. Yes. Is it primetime uh, main network drama approach? Sure. But it's also in the 10 o'clock slot. So it's a little more harder edge than you might think. Uh, and I think the performances across the board, starting with Hillary, are really good. And it's exploring the death of um, Native American women and trafficking of Native American women oh, in Alaska wow. and how that doesn't get reported. Or Native women, rather. I should say Native women in Alaska and how that doesn't get reported, how it doesn't get uh, talked about. And she's kind of trying to break this case so to kind of expose it. So it's a, it's a really good show that's out right now. So those are my recommendations. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Gotta yeah. love it. There you go. Those are our right. recommendations right. and reviews and whatnot for the weekend. There you go. We'll put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right, we're out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We appreciate it madly. Wendy, uh, where can they find you and everything that going on? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Wendy Lee Zaney. On TikTok, it's actually just Wendy Zaney. Um, YouTube, of course, The Movie Couple channel, themoviecouple.com, if you want to check out some of the written stuff. I'm still working on the build. I think I have to change the layout for the website. Okay. I was it was suggest it was advised to me <laughs> by some industry professionals that that maybe take a look at that. And I was like, all right, I'll take I'll take I'll take any sort of advice. Uh, and then one last thing, uh, I I did a, a Mario Party um, Super oh, Mario yeah. Party play uh, stream with Reaction Channel previewed Jay and Adam. We we you know been became pretty good friends and so we text back and forth and they're like do you and dustin want to play another game and we're like sure so they tweeted it out on their twitter and um travis willingham from critical mm. role yeah. retweeted it and was like hey i love these people check out the reviews the movie that's couple awesome. endorsed by the one and only travis Willingham. <laughs> that's pretty awesome that's i think awesome. i like want to put that in the, in the twitter bio <laughs> yeah yeah i saw him retweet it i was like oh that's awesome that's huge. um yeah, as for me, you can follow me at The Rogue Says, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok uh, down there. Subscribe to the channel for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, as I'm going to post this a little bit later, uh, subscribe to the channel down below. Leave a comment, hit a like, share it on your social media. Uh, we want to give more and more attention to the show as we love doing it on Friday. It's kind of a detox from the week, hang out, have some fun Friday show. Yeah. That's what it is, and, and I love that we're doing it on the channel for sure. Show your uh, shirt. And, and, your shirt. Oh, your yeah, shirt. that's for, that's, uh, for uh, here at 1 o'clock. In about 30 minutes, I'm going live on Strong Style. We've got Raven joining us, the legendary ECW and Impact champion, joining us for an interview for about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. And then we're going to get into all the stuff that went on in the week. So that's going to be live today in about 30 minutes for anybody who's interested on the channel as well. Um, and, of course, we'll have reviews over the weekend. Uh, I got a feeling I'll do a Banshee's interview, Sharon. I'm sure I'm going to do a, a, a spoiler review of Black Adam. It might be with the Geek Buddies. I'm trying to convince them to do it because they didn't like it either. So I'm trying to convince them to do it with me if they want to spend some time. But look at all that stuff coming up this weekend for sure. Uh, all right, we're out of here. Y'all are the best. Take care of yourselves. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new live episode of the John and Wendy Show.